what's up you guys, Century Productions here and welcome to the Watchtower series. If you're new here, this is basically just a deep dive into my toy photography, how I set everything up, how I light my figures, how I pose my figures, basically how I achieve the final photo, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. Uh, today we're working with the new Extremis Iron Man Marvel Legends figure. Uh, this came out in the Puff Adder Build-A-Figure wave. Uh, this is definitely one of the most anticipated armors that I've been waiting for for a very long time. You know, Hasbro tackled this way back in 2012 it was one of their first figures when they relaunched the Marvel Legends line and you know at the time a lot of us did in fact like it I remember specifically thinking it was a great figure but I think the majority of us always thought it was just far too small uh, in comparison to the rest of the line it was just a very small Iron Man armor which in retrospect you know this armor is very skin tight to Tony himself if you guys are familiar with the extremist armor uh, basically, in that run, uh, Tony gets injected with the extremist um, virus, or like a modification of it, and basically he's able to house part of his suit within the hollows of his bones. Basically, any of the gold parts you see on this suit, he's able to actually um, uh, store that in the hollows of his bones through like nanotechnology or something. And then the rest of his uh, armor, these red parts, the outer armor, uh, can come to him kind of like uh, we saw in Iron Man 3 when he can call the armor to him. Um, so like I said, Hasbro had uh, taken a crack at this figure, but I think it kind of left the fans thirsty for a, a better version. And they gave us this version, and I really think they did a great job of relaunching this new armor with better articulation, pinless technology, and overall it's a lot bigger and it just looks a lot better. And after taking this shot here, it photographs really nicely as well. Uh, I'm a huge Iron Man fan. I love picking up these armors. Sometimes I'll pick up two or three of, uh, copies of these figures just so I can keep one in my armory, one for my regular collection. You guys might have noticed this figure specifically from the Civil War storyline. Uh, it was prominent during that and I believe when he became Director of S.H.I.E.L.D. directly after the Civil War storyline. Uh, so I think that this Iron Man is actually going to replace my modular Iron Man and be my new stand-in for Iron Man in my Avengers display. Because, you know, when I first started reading uh, comics, this was the, the armor that Tony was rocking. And back then, Tony was not a very likable guy. I mean, he wasn't as cool as, like, uh, he's portrayed by Robert Downey Jr. in those movies. He was a very cold, mean-spirited, um, and in a lot of ways, evil um, to his fellow superheroes, so, you know, his comic counterpart is definitely different from his MCU counterpart, but more recently, Tony's been, um, looking a little bit better in the comics, but, uh, so yeah, working with glass here, we got a background, this is a 11 by 17 background, I just got this pinned against the wall, I have my, usually I'll have the glass sitting flat, with something raising it up and I'll be shooting downwards looking up, but, uh, when I tried doing that with this figure, it was just too many reflections on the glass, so, uh, what I did is I basically tilted the glass up and I just tacked him onto um, the glass here. I used blue plumber's tack. If you guys are curious what I'm talking about, it's just blue tack basically and it's just to put on his arm, his uh, thigh and the bottom portion of his leg and he's a pretty light figure so he, um, he sticks that glass pretty well. I make sure to wipe down my glass. And when I'm shooting um, this figure when, with the glass being vertical like it is, it's a lot less reflections because the light from the background is kind of shining through and it's not really um, hitting the figure in a way that it's providing any reflections, if that makes sense. So when you're working with glass and you're, you're getting reflections shooting, shooting a certain way, you know, maybe sometimes it's, it's better to just either move your camera around, move your lights around, and, you know, just kind of find that sweet spot. You know, it takes a lot of just, um, you know, m moving all of those different things around to finally get to what you're, you're looking for for your shot. So here's a different angle so you can kind of see the glass a little bit better. You got the edge right here, edge right here. And basically I have these two LED desk lamps that, uh, I have two of them. I usually only use one of these. Actually, neither of these lights are on right now because I have this light, this light, and another light right here that are shining on the Iron Man to give him the light I need. If I had this light on, it'd just be too bright onto his face right here. Uh, but basically what this is doing is I have one on this side of the glass, one on this side of the glass, and it's just basically stopping the glass from falling either that way or this way. 
I don't I really am not securing it any other way. Like I said, this is such a light figure that it's not going to cause the glass to like drastically move either way. Uh, and in case you guys are wondering, um, you know, I use glass a lot. This is just a, a piece of Detol uh, glass from one of my display cabinets. It works pretty well. I've used it in the past. I do have a larger sheet of glass, but this just seemed perfect for this little shot right here. Uh, you can see how confined this is. I'm shooting this way, and uh, it's obviously going to be in the parameters of just this backdrop right here. But you can see, you know, just to get the glass vertical up like that doesn't really take that much ingenuity you know if you had like a clamp or something on the bottom here I'm sure you could achieve the same effect of keeping it upright I, like I said the reason why I went upright is just because of the reflections I was having trouble um, you know shooting the glass when it was laying flat so I just changed the position of the glass and it actually helped out quite a bit now when I'm shooting this there is still a tiny reflection I'm seeing of this hand right here um, on the side of the glass but it's it's so minor that I think you'd really have to be looking for it in, in order to see it. Like obviously I see it because I'm shooting the, the shot and I'm making sure that I don't see any of those reflections. But um, So it is there if you're looking for it, but I doubt anyone will see it or notice it. Uh, I just thought this background worked really well with this figure. It was a nighttime scene. I wanted to make sure that I lit his little uh, rocket boosters just came with the Iron Man figure. I don't remember exactly which Iron Man, but got one of my little Yulonzis right here. Got it pointed to the back right here, shining up, and it's providing just enough light to actually light up those uh, those uh, little fire effects on the bottom of his feet really nicely. And since it's a night shot, it actually lights him up even more. It looks better in camera. So overall, very happy with this shot. I think it looks great. It's a very simple shot. Just a nice pose of Iron Man flying through the sky just to kind of highlight how cool this figure is. And, uh, you know, this is a very standard Iron Man pose. And I think he's done this pose in this exact suit as well. So uh, definitely looking forward to shooting more of this figure. I just need to come up with more ideas. You know, I don't really have anything, any ideas to shoot with this figure. So I was like, you know, I don't have any ideas. So let's just do him flying through the sky with a nice backdrop. And here we are. And uh, I think it's a really nice photo. So let's check it out. All right, so I got a little Star Wars set up here. It's currently May 3rd, uh, so tomorrow is Star Wars Day. I believe that it's Star Wars Day, May the 4th, right? Uh, and I decided to shoot a little Star Wars shot, something funny I thought some people might get a kick out of. Uh, typically, I don't really shoot any Star Wars related stuff uh, for toy photography. Uh, I have a million Star Wars toys and action figures, and I love Star Wars, but uh, for some reason, I'm just always gravitating towards the comic related stuff, you know, Marvel for the most part. If you're a fan of this channel, you know that. Uh, but yeah, I thought it'd be kind of cool to whip out some old um, Star Wars Black Series figures. Well, I don't, I don't think this figure's that old, but uh, I recently picked up this AT-AT. I believe Mattel makes it. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it was a couple weeks back that I grabbed it. Uh, it's the the metal die cast version, and you know when I saw this, I was like, oh man, this is just too cool to to not pick up. Uh, I definitely bought this with the intention of shooting it. And I've just kind of had it like thrown on my desk for the most part, and then I realized it was May 3rd, and I was like, oh man, maybe I can shoot that ATAT -AT, uh, because I was kind of thinking of some sort of Hoth setup of shooting him in the distance. You know, I've shot a couple of the miniature Star Wars ships in the past, and I, th I think it's always really fun to shoot those. Uh, more than anything, more than the characters and the Jedi and Luke Skywalker and Obi and the Sith and all that, I love the Star Wars ships, man. I just think they're so cool. Uh, and like their vehicles as well. So we got the AT-AT -AT Imperial Walker here. So I was planning on just shooting that, but then I got the, you know, I was thinking, I was like, everyone's going to be taking Star Wars shots. What, what can I do to make mine a little bit different? Maybe something funny. Uh, I've been kind of taking more serious action shots lately, comic covers. So uh, I wanted to kind of get back to my roots when I first started off toy photography and do something funny. And I was sitting around um, looking at this ATAT, -AT, and then I was like, I have the ATAT -AT driver. And I was like, why don't I just have him sitting on top of it? Maybe like, like it's like a pony or something like that. And then the caption will be something like, uh, when you order the wrong size online, but you still gotta attack the re rebel base. Something like that. Something funny like that. Uh, I didn't want, when I sat him on here, it was like actually harder than you would think to get him seated on here or sat on here uh, correctly, or I guess not correctly, but. Um, to where it looks natural. 
uh, but I didn't have anything for him to do with his hands, so I kind of just took a twisty tie and kind of wrapped it around him, having him hold on to the twisty tie, kind of like it's some reins for a horse or something. I just didn't like his hands sitting there doing nothing, uh, so I just kind of threw that on there. Hopefully that makes sense. So, yeah, that's the kind of idea I'm going for, is like he's riding a pony or a horse or something like that. Uh, and I think it's pretty funny. I like this little setup that I have here as well. Uh, uh, using uh, people will always ask when I use this. This is just basically they believe it's actually called fake snow I got it off of Amazon working with a cutout back here um, This is a cutout I pulled from some animated show probably a couple years back and cut out and, uh, I use them every now and again I'll go through my cutout stash and see if uh, I have a cutout that can kind of fit the environment and I and I tend to shoot uh, stuff like this uh, more often than not where you know I have mountains in the background that are cutouts, have my sky background back there, and then I have all my action in the front, kind of like this. So this is kind of a shot I've taken before, but you know, obviously the subject matter changes. I think the last time I shot this was Superman carrying a Christmas tree. Uh, so yeah, this is my little May the 4th shot. Um, I'm actually really digging it. I cracked myself up a couple times. Uh, and you know, this at, -AT driver uh, figure is actually really nice. Like I said, I got it a couple years back and um, you know, this um, at, -AT doesn't really do much. Like I said, it's die cast. It doesn't really move. The legs don't move. The head kind of can go back and forth and up and down. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't really move that much. So, yeah, this is the basic setup. All right, so you can kind of see a little bit more of the setup. Um, just him. There's probably about, I don't know, maybe nine inches between the cutout and uh, this at, at I didn't like the snow just being flat right here leading up to the cutout, so I added a little bit of an angle leading up. This is a folded t-shirt under here. You guys can kind of tell it's a gray t-shirt. And basically I've just uh, kind of folded it up and um, sat it up there and it kind of just transitions into the cutout. Uh, gives a nice little bit of an angle uh, with the mountains raised up a little bit. And I think it, I think it works out pretty well here. Uh, so the cutout. Uh, it's just a regular printer paper, glue stick to the back of some construction paper, and cut out. Very simple stuff, guys, to make this, and for the most part, it's uh, it's as cheap as you can get as far as diorama pieces and everything, and it always looks really great in uh, camera. You just kind of have to find the images uh, and then do the work of uh, printing them out and cutting them out. I'll, I'll at some point do a cutout tutorial one of these days, but um, so you got that. The cutout, and then of course I'm using this little light uh, that Ulanzi sent me recently. This is like the bulb attachment, and uh, you know I this is only the second shot I'm using with this light. Just to learn more about the light, I think I'll just shoot a couple more shots with it, and then maybe I'll find its strengths, you know, its weaknesses. Uh, but so far I really do like this light, and you kind of just plug it straight in, so I don't have to worry about it running out of battery or anything like that. But yeah, pretty straightforward shot. Just kind of got them sitting there. Uh, uh, I think it's hilarious. That's just me personally. I think it's something different that you'll see on Star Wars Day. Uh, you know, we've all seen that meme of Darth Vader uh, walking the ATAT, -AT, but I don't think I've ever seen the ATAT -AT driver uh, actually sitting on it like a horse. So let's check the shot out. All right, so I'm on the table with the little Wonder Man shot here. Picked up this uh, Simon Williams figure maybe three weeks ago. I absolutely love this costume. I love the character of Wonder Man. Uh, this costume reminds me of the late 70s, early 80s Avengers books, uh, uh, more particularly with George Perez as the artist. Uh, so I wanted to take the opportunity to maybe take a couple more shots with him. Uh, so I kind of set up this scene. I came up with this idea last night. Set up the scene, it's pretty simple. I mean, he's just lifting up this car. There's a cat underneath the car, you know. He's just doing some superhero shit here. Lifting up the car, saving the cat, even though the cat doesn't look to be bothered at all. He's kind of playing with the a little can here. Some of the set pieces I'm working with here, I believe this is the cat from one of the Captain Marvel uh, MCU figures, of course Wonder Man. Working with this car, I believe this car, I got this online a couple years back, I believe it's called, it's from a company called American Plastic. There's a couple, there's a bunch of companies that made um, these cars, they're old stock cars, I believe this was a Richard Petty stock car, it's just an old like late 70s, early 80s toy for like little kids. Uh, but they just happen to be 1 12th scale almost perfectly. You can actually even fit 
um, a figure in the car. Uh, it just comes dressed as a, a stock car, so you kind of have to do some, um, you know, paintwork on it and everything. And it took me a while to do it, but I eventually was able to, uh, you know, kind of just turn this into like a shitty like 1980s um, car. It reminds me of like one of those old 1980s cop cars. Uh, so basically we're just in like a suburban neighborhood. I've got these white picket fences that I found at Hobby Lobby. Got some cutouts of some trees back here. Um, you know, these are just kind of blue tacked onto a uh, flight stand. And then I've got some grass, blue sky. Just uh, And then of course I'm working with uh, this part right here is from the NECA diorama. It's the little sidewalk attachment for that. So um, lots of little different pieces just kind of put together. I have some fake leaves in the front. I just didn't like how clean it looked, so I wanted to add just a couple things just to make it, you know, to kind of fill up the space a little bit. Uh, if you guys are wondering how the car is being held up, it's pretty simple. We've got another flight stand under the car. Then I have some counterweights on the other end of the car to help it just kind of stay up. Of course, we've got Wonder Man kind of posed uh, with one of the hands that he actually came with. Uh, it's like one of the gripping hands that looks like this. Uh, and he's just kind of holding up the car. I mean, he's not really holding up anything. It's the flight stand that's really holding it up. But yeah, like I said, this is just some superhero shit. Um, I just thought this was kind of like a cool way to shoot this figure. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the point where Wonder Man doesn't fully have all of his, like, ionic powers. So, um, at this point, he really just has his super strength, I believe. Um, so I, I felt like this was a cool way to demonstrate that. Alright, so, uh, here's, like, a different angle of the setup. I initially had this LED panel kind of sitting right here. It was providing some light for the cutouts and, of course, the Wonder Man, but I kind of moved that to the side so obviously you guys can see a little bit more of what's going on. Um, I got the two... Uh, panel minis right here. This one is for uh, backlight. This one is to shine light on the cat so you see it a little bit better. Uh, there is a light strip that is running uh, from the bottom over here. You can't see it in camera uh, but it's pushing light upward because I have a couple lights that are kind of looking at or pointing at the uh, those tree cutouts and they're casting shadows on the blue sky background so that light back there is kind of helping making those disappear. Uh, but overall, yeah, this is the setup, man. There's not really uh, too much to it. Uh, kind of just have these uh, white picket fence just kind of propped up with some clear ac acrylic uh, risers. Um, you know, there's not really like a, a crazy amount of thought put into it. Um, you know, most of this stuff is not going to be um, in the actual shot itself. So you can kind of just like jimmy rig it. And, you know, as long as the fence stays up and, and looks good in camera, it doesn't really matter how you're making it stand up. Uh, so yeah, and then of course the same concept goes with that car, you know, we just have a counterbalance on the end of that car, uh, which funny enough, there is a Millennium Falcon diecast vehicle that kind of just fit perfectly and weighed just enough to kind of uh, sit his uh, uh, left rear end down the car, and it just worked perfectly, it was just something I had lying around, you know, trying to be a little resourceful, so. Uh, overall, it's a fun little shot, I love this Wonder Man figure, uh, you know, I'm probably gonna take a couple more shots with him I just I love this outfit man it's just super cool I never thought that they would ever make a, a, a Marvel Legends Wonder Man with uh, this uh, outfit but they did so anyways thanks for watching this ep episode guys uh, uh, hopefully pick something up maybe uh, lighting wise or posing wise or you know maybe the glass technique I think I showed that Iron Man shot uh, and yeah, uh, you guys definitely got to check out this Ulanzi garage kit. I used it for this shot as well. This thing is pretty handy, man. Uh, it's got all the different attachments, and I've been using it a lot for my shot, so uh, actually really enjoying it. Uh, make sure to check out my Instagram if you guys haven't already. Um, see more behind the scenes over there. And, uh, you know, if you guys got any question or any feedback, or if you think there was something I could have done different with one of my shots, you know, leave me a comment below, you know, it's, it's a two-way road, you, you know, I give you maybe some helpful hints, you know, but, you know, give me some my way too, I'm not a, uh, perfect at this by any means, so I'm always trying to learn, and, um, yeah, so thanks for watching, guys, I really appreciate it, peace!